<laughs> According to the American <laughs> Cancer Society, breast cancer is the most common cancer among American women, except for skin cancers. In fact, one in eight women in the U.S. will develop invasive breast cancer at some point during their lives, which is a scary statistic. It is. Yeah, Dr. A.J. Capelli of Aurora Healthcare Center in Kenosha is here to talk about the problems that prevent some women from getting that life-saving mammogram and when that test is absolutely necessary. Thanks for being here, doctor. Oh, it's an honor. Thank important, you. important topic. It is, absolutely. Let's talk about um, breast cancer in general and just that statistic, that one in eight. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a very scary statistic and almost everyone I know knows someone who has um, been diagnosed with breast cancer. That's the important part. Uh, one in eight people in their lifetime, a woman will have breast cancer. Men, to a lesser degree, you know, one percent, two percent. But um, the issue is that to get uh, to have have a mammogram is the message we want to get out today. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. what I asked you during the break, I want you to repeat. How many cases of breast cancer, roughly, are detected by mammogram? Eighty-five percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, eighty-five percent are found because of a mammogram. Yes. Why, especially, because like it, our insurance, for example, you can have a mammogram for free after you're 40 every year. Mm -hmm. Why aren't women getting them? I, I don't think they're painful. I mean, it's a little uncomfortable, but why aren't women getting them? It's not invasive. When I'm in the hospital, I feel real comfortable. I'm uncomfortable here. Mm. People who come to a doctor's office or go to the health system are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a frightening experience. You don't want the results. Even though that common sense would tell you you need something, to go through the process of going to a hospital, the expense of going to a hospital, think of all the barriers that a woman feels or deals with in her day. Um, most women care for everybody else. They don't care for themselves. That's a number one barrier. And, you know, finding out what the results are is another barrier to women. You know, if I go in and find something, oh, my God, what are they going to do? Yeah, Not but the sooner the better. And right? the, the answer to that question is uh, 20 years ago, before we start getting involved with doing mammograms regularly, um, people would five-year survival was around 60, 59 to 65 percent. Uh, Five-year survival with breast cancer is up to 80 percent. Mm. We're able to c cure people with um, early diagnosis. And so that's the real important message. And not to fear going to the doctor or having a mammogram. And I think that that's a big issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to kind of talk about the process because, you know, when people have to deal with a healthcare system, you know, you're uncomfortable. Yeah. And right. And it is uncomfortable. I mean, they the really cost. squish your breasts. And it hurts. I mean, and, it, and it, it's, it's a little, I, I don't know that it hurts. It's a little uncomfortable. Yes. But it's like, yeah, so they squish your breasts for a couple of minutes and you, you could potentially save your life. I understand. Um, but anything that inhibits a person, and whether it be that or other things, you have to listen to what they're saying to you and help them through that. Mm -hmm. Our job is to help people through the healthcare system, especially in primary care. And I, I wanted to talk about our process because, you know, if you look at 15 years ago, it took 45 days from the time a woman would find a lump in her breast to the time she knew what it was. Mm -hmm. And because th she'd go to the doctor, they'd say, well, we'll get a mammogram. They ordered a mammogram. It was Thursday. They couldn't get it till Monday. Then they had to come back and get the results on Friday. And then all of a sudden he says, well, we need to get an ultrasound. So then they scheduled it on Tuesday. The patient, the woman was busy. She had her kids. She had a soccer tournament. Mm -hmm. She didn't get back to the doctor the following Monday. Then she had to go. So 45 days between, by the time she saw the surgeon, she had to schedule a biopsy. She had to go through the whole process. And can you imagine how overwhelming that is for anybody? Yeah, not um, only that, but just finding the time, like you said. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. So what we've done, and uh, the thing that I'm so proud of, um, is we've condensed that. Now, remember, I'm not going to force this down your throat, but I can get it done in three to four days. Three to four days. I can get you through the process and help you through that. Not me, mm -hmm. our team. Yeah. We've gone to a team approach. It's not just me controlling the situation as a primary care doctor. It's utilizing all members of the health system, our radiologists, our breast care coordinators, our, our technicians, our admissions office, getting people through the process in the time they want, making mm -hmm. sure it's accommodating their lives because you know how busy everybody is. Mm -hmm. Are you going to fit it in today? You know? For sure. If somebody is over 40, they know that's when they need to begin doing mammograms. Yes. Um, if someone's under 40 or even if they haven't had their mammogram, is there a sign or symptom people should be aware of to know that they should come in and ask for an exam? Wonderful question. 
Um, obviously, if if you have a strong family history, and this is big with Angelie Jolie, yes. you're talking about this genetic predisposition of a dominant chromosome. The, the issue is that um, it's a small segment, 5-10% of the population, that you have to really be concerned if you have multiple generations and multiple people in your family who, who have a cancer of the ovary or breast. So the perspective on getting genetic testing at this time should be through your doctor talking to a geneticist talking to an oncologist getting the the right information don't jump into that because it's scary on both sides mm -hmm. i want to read the symptoms real quickly signs and, and symptoms Beautiful. a new lump or mass in the breast swelling of all or part of the breast skin irritation or dimpling uh, breast or nipple pain, nipple retraction where it turns inward, redness, scaliness, or thickening of the nipple or breast skin, and then nipple discharge. All of those things are signs that you potentially have a problem and should see a doctor right away. And as simple as that sounds, because this is common sense, I've had women come in with fungating lesions, Ugh. open sores, large lumps, you know, big enough to grow over two years. They just didn't take care of it. They didn't come in. They were, there was a barrier. Is it cost? Well, um, healthy, uh, well woman Wisconsin is helping people who don't have the money or don't have the benefits. You mm -hmm. have the benefits, but if you don't, have, you can get help through the state. And you go to Well Woman Wisconsin on the internet, you can get uh, it paid for. So okay. important. And we put up the information. We're going to put it up again so you can make an appointment with Aurora Cancer Care. It's 888-649-6892 or aurora.org slash cancer care for more information. And you can contact Dr. Uh, A.J. Capelli there as well for more information um, on breast care. Thanks for being here, doctor. We appreciate wow. it. That was easy. I See? Know. Thank, Thank you for your time. Quick and painless, just like that mammogram. Shout That's out to right. the office. Mm -hmm. i got to tell the office. There you okay. go. Okay.